we can usually catch her meeting with Eugene H. Krabs because they're because they're widow lovers. What up everyone, it's your boy Flo's MG back with another episode of Teared Up. This time, we are doing Spongebob characters, as you can see behind me. I feel like I don't need to explain how this is done, so let's just get right into it, shall we? Before this video starts, I just want to say that only a small percentage of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you like this video and want to see more like it, hit that subscribe button, it doesn't cost anything, and you can always change your mind in the future. Now back to the video. First up, we got the main face of Spongebob, aka the main reason Spongebob Squarepants exist. That's right, we're motherfucking Spongebob Squarepants! I'm a little sleep deprived. Alright, so Spongebob, basically without him, show wouldn't exist. It's kind of clear that he's a god tier one, you know? Alright, next up we have one of the superheroes from Spongebob, who always lived on in our hearts but in the real world has passed away. We have Barnacle Boy. He was part of the dynamic duo that lived within the realm of Bikini Bottom. I feel, as a sign of respect, he must be a god tier, because he's a superhero. It's what he would have wanted. Speaking of dead guys, oh, that's a bad segue. Either way, now we have the Flying Dutchman. Flying Dutchman, who I can only guess was a pirate in his life then became a ghost pirate in his afterlife, always insistent on hunt, ha hunting, no, haunting Spongebob and his widow friends. He does make good contributions to the show, and actually there was a Halloween special, no wait, he was actually the main center around two Halloween specials. The very first one, and I think that was actually the first episode he even appeared in. And then there was a Halloween special that came out a few years ago, I think, where it was like the stop motion Christmas one, but it was Halloween. And Dutchman was the main center around that. Like, he's not a big, big character like Spongebob and like Patrick and the rest. So, he's definitely more like an employee of the month character. Next, we have Gary. Gary, the snail. Spongebob's trusted pet. And, who's mo and who is most famous for his line of... Gary, unironically, is like the, seems like a voice of reason in the show in some episodes. How? I don't know, because all he can go is, meow. The show is just that much better with, with him. Gary, he's employee of the month. Next, we're getting into the even lesser, we have Grandma Squarepants. She's that sweet grandma that everyone loves, who makes the greatest cookies there was that one episode where she treated Patrick more like a grandson than Spongebob. And, oh, did Spongebob not take it well? And I think for that, uh, for Grandma Squarepants' accidental neglect, I have to put her in, in ugly and I'm proud. Now, going down a generation, we have Spongebob's father, Harold Squarepants. There's not much from this one, but we do see where Spongebob gets his sense of style from. We rarely ever see him or his wife in the show. But still, he is the father of Spongebob, and I felt like he deserved to be here. I'm going to put him in Goofy Goober, because for the first few years that I've seen Spongebob, I always thought he was a cookie. So it puts him, so it's fitting to put him at the place where they serve a lot of sweets. Moving on, we have Plankton's computer wife, Karen, who I feel like was the basis for all of today's Karens in society. Thanks a lot, you computer wife. Well, either way. Karen, Plankton's wife, made for him, and more specifically by him. She's more so known in the in the show as Plankton's voice of reason. And ironically, you'd think a voice of reason would tell Plankton, Stop going after the formula. It's a lost cause. But no, uh, Plankton programmed too much love in her. Okay, that didn't come out right. I'm gonna shut up before I dig myself an even deeper hole by putting Karen up here in Employee of the Month, cause to me, she was a likable character. Next up, we have Larry the Lobster, the freaking jacked motherfucker at the beach. Hey, Larry, there's a lot I can say about this guy, and yet there's also practically nothing I can say about this guy. Being strong and jock-like and working out is his is is, is all his. That's all his personality is. Like, 
I don't I don't feel much depth to it other than that which is why I, I can't put it any higher than ugly and I'm proud okay next we have Spongebob's mom Margaret Squarepants and the fact that Margaret held Spongebob within her for nine months that energetic box of joy that's fucking strength she's an employee of the month next we have the other superhero that sadly passed away we have Mermaid Man. As a sign of respect, you know what I must do. No questions asked. He is a god tier in our hearts. Next up, we have SpongeBob's boss, Eugene H. Krabs. I still don't know what the H stands for. AKA Mr. Krabs, owner and proprietor of the Krusty Krab, creator of the Krabby Patty, and a huge lover of money. Money, 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 money. He's one of the characters that makes the show what it is. I feel like, honestly, he has to be put at a god tier for that. Next up, we have Mrs. Puff, SpongeBob's driving instructor at her boating school. But still, with Mrs. Puff, when we don't see her at the boating school, we can usually catch her meeting with Eugene H. Krabs because they're, cause they're a widow. Lovers. Still, her personality isn't entirely boating school and fear of Spongebob. She does actually have, like, other traits. Which is why I'm not going to put her in the same realm as Larry. Um, I don't feel like she rises to the standard as any of those other characters, so I'm going to put her a Goofy Goober. Next up, we have Patchy the Pirate! We see him a few times throughout the Spongebob series. Patchy is played by the same person who voices Spongebob, Tom Kenny. If you don't see the resemblance, then you're actually dumb. He is a big part of the show. Maybe not the biggest contributor. Sorry, Patchy. Next up, we got Patrick Star. <laughs> Patrick, another one of the bigger characters that makes the show what it is. And the show would definitely be much worse without him. Some episodes that center around Patrick are also pretty good. No, why am I even deliberating? It's obvious where he belongs. Next up, we got Mr. Krabs daughter, Pearl Krabs, which in health class, she would probably get a lot of insults. Just saying. She's basically just the perfect definition of like, like spoiled teenager. Well, maybe not exactly spoiled, but more so needy and greedy, I believe is something that she inherited from her pops. Not, exa not exactly greedy in terms of money, but more so in greedy and things in exchange for money. I don't know. I, I, I just feel like Pearl's personality is just angsty teen. So she's an ugly and I'm proud character. Next up we have, I went to college. Plankton, Sheldon J. Plankton. I don't know what the J stands for either. Plankton, owner and proprietor of the Chum Bucket, constantly tries to steal the crab and pad of formula. Originally, Plankton was gonna be maybe a Goofy Goober or Employee of the Month character. All anyone really knows him for is stealing the Krabby Patty formula, but we learn, but we learn throughout the series that he does have many more traits. We learn of his romantic side with certain episodes between him and Karen, or that one episode where he kind of got infatuated with uh, Mrs. Krabs. We learn that he's a actually a decent pet owner when it comes to his amoeba spot. Other than that, there's not really not that much, but still, the show wouldn't be the same without Plankton, despite the fact he's a villain. Go put. Oh, I didn't even know that image I got was him in a bubble. <laughs> Next up, we got Sandy. <laughs> the only mammal, I believe, living under the sea. But still, I don't know why I'm debating. Sandy is a god tier. And finally, we have Squidward Q Tentacles. Q, I can only imagine, stands for Quincy. Squidward. Well, he hates Patrick and SpongeBob, and he hates his job at the Krusty Krab, but we learn much more about him and it doesn't make him a completely annoying character just because of his nasalness. I really need to go to sleep. So, uh, so on that note, Squidward, God tier, and I'm gonna go to fucking sleep. These are the standings of the SpongeBob characters. Feel free to argue with me. I've been Flo's MG. This has been Tear Up SpongeBob Characters, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye!